An online prediction is spreading like wildfire, suggesting that the US dollar will undergo hyperinflation in a mere 90 days. This speculation hinges on a belief that Bitcoin's value will skyrocket to $1 million within the same time frame. Balaji Srinivasan anticipates a dramatic hyperinflationary downfall of the US dollar by the time summer arrives. Very impressive. Very bold, confident. Now, one might wonder, could this prediction come true? Ever since the US dollar left the gold standard behind in 1971, there has been a surge in hyperinflation incidents worldwide while numerous fiat currencies collapsing. This can be attributed to the fact that when a currency's only limitation is political will, there tends to be an expansion in its production. This has consequently caused the downfall of many currencies across the globe. Here's a graph by Bitcoin Homer. A staggering 152 currencies have crumbled because of hyperinflation. 82 of these currencies lasted less than 10 years and 15 of them lasted less than one year. On average, fiat currencies have a lifespan of roughly 25 years, with the medium duration being seven years. But it's not just the emerging markets and the developing countries that are facing this issue, but also the major countries. We're packing up, time to relocate. Should the US dollar face a similar outcome, it would signify a total collapse in the currency. This visual capitalist infographic illustrates the significant currencies in recent times and their declining value compared to gold over the past few decades. Throughout history, Global fiat currencies have experienced hyperinflation and failure because of excessive printing. In the past 120 years, many significant currencies have seen their value diminish substantially or entirely since their introduction. Even nations governing the world's reserve currency have experienced this trend as depicted in a graph by Ray Dalio, shows the rise and fall of great empires throughout the last 500 years. And this is a chart showing what led to the fall of these empires. We can see from the black line that the reserve currency status is among the final aspects to collapse. This leads us to the US dollar. From its establishment in 1913, the dollar's value has diminished significantly. It started off being worth over $25. But as time went on, it has lost almost all its value. Initially, currencies serve as a redeemable tool for limited resources, commonly in a form of gold. But as time passes, governments and central banks increase its buying capacity and start producing more money which ultimately leads to the currency's value diminishing. Where's the money? A currency serves as an exchangeable tool for a limited resource, with gold being the most common example throughout history. Individuals store their gold in banks, specifically in central bank vaults, and obtain a document guaranteeing the retrieval of their gold whenever desired. However, over time, the central authorities, often collaborating with the central bank, become excessively desirous of increased buying power. Rather than solely distributing an equal quantity of banknotes, cash, and claims for gold as the actual gold in their possession, banks tend to slightly overdo it by issuing a bit too many assuming that this minor increase in purchasing power won't negatively impact the economy. That's where you're wrong. However, when there's a bank run and individuals attempt to claim their gold all at once, they discover it's not available. This occurred in 1971 during a bank run when individuals attempted to exchange their dollars for gold only to find there was insufficient gold to accommodate all the dollars. Where's my money, bitch? 
Where's my money? The sole issue now is that there's no longer any restraint or concern about a bank run on the issuer, as it's no longer linked to gold. Ever since 1971, the sole factor that is stopping the production of additional dollars has been political will. Consequently, this has contributed to a rise in the occurrence of hyperinflationary breakdowns of fiat currencies, such as the US dollar. At present, the United States is grappling with a staggering $31 billion in cumulative debt. According to projections by the Congressional Badge Office, this deficit is set to worsen annually going forward. For the first time in use, interest rates on federal debt are also on an uprise trajectory. Anticipated earnings are expected to decrease, while upcoming expenditures are predicted to rise because of obligatory spending on initiatives like Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security and military expenditures. This implies a greater reliance on borrowing to bridge the gap with elevated interest rates. Although a drastic hyperinflationary downfall of the US dollar is conceivable, it's not guaranteed. We can't be sure. The United States faces a challenging financial situation as it struggles to repay its mounting debt with the revenue collected from taxes. Because of this, the country is forced to take on additional loans at increasingly higher interest rates to settle previous debts. What? You're in debt? This results in a rapidly growing expense column and an accelerated increase in the interest portion of the debt, which ultimately becomes harder to pay off. Uh. Hey, this guy's paying off! The Congressional Badge Office's projections, by 2053, the debt to GDP ratio will reach a staggering 200%. This suggests that the United States will struggle to cover the interest on its debt, let alone meet all its other essential obligations. The nation's debt burden is increasing and the interest rates attached to that debt are soaring at an alarming rate. We need to go now. In situations where the United States struggles to generate sufficient revenue through taxes and borrowing at elevated interest rates, the Federal Reserve intervenes by monetizing the debt. By printing money to acquire it, they expand their balance sheet and permanently secure all US government debt. This results in inflationary financing or the process of creating money to cover expenses. Regardless of whether you examine recent instances such as Venezuela, Argentina, Zimbabwe and Lebanon or into historical events like the German Weimar Republic or the Mississippi bubble in France. The narrative remains consistent. And so the present financial state of the United States, a hyperinflationary downfall of the dollar, appears somewhat likely. And so what can stop all of this? The only solution to escape this predicament is through deflation, a deflationary death spiral, great depression, paying off debt or resorting to austerity, which in doing that will lead to a hyperinflation of the country's currency. A compelling case for an imminent hyperinflationary downfall can be made just from observing the latest wave of bank collapses. A rough week for the banking industry. The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. The second biggest bank collapse in US history. Ranging from Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank to international establishments like Credit Suisse. As banks continue to fail, additional money are printed through loan or permanent purchase to bail out those who had money in the banks. When a bank receives a dollar, it lends it to another person. This person then spends the money, which ends up in a different bank account, leading to a phenomenon known as rehypothecation. And so rehypothecation, I'll frame it up very simply. If I had a candy bar and I gave it to you, you would owe me a candy bar. 
and you mm-hmm. gave the candy bar to somebody else. So now you, somebody else owes it to you, but you also owe it to me. That person gives it to somebody else. Now they have an IOU and they also owe it to somebody else. And that can go around eight people think they have a candy bar, even though there's only one candy bar. That eighth person Correct. eats the candy bar and now eight candy bars disappear out of the system. As the original dollar circulates among numerous bank accounts, it's actually not physically present. Typically, these transactions balances each other out, allowing banks to utilize and expend that money as though the money is still available in that person's bank account. However, during a bank run, when everybody withdraws their money, the bank lack sufficient funds to accommodate every withdrawal for their customers. I'm afraid you can't withdraw it. For US banks, the total amount of dollars in a system diminishes because the banks end up selling their assets so that they can produce more dollars. Unfortunately, those assets they end up selling are bonds. Within the past three years, interest rates of bonds have shot up. When interest rates go up, bond prices go down. And so when a bank has all their money in bonds, they end up selling their bonds at a negative return. Since banks don't have enough assets to sell to produce dollars for their customers, this prompts the Federal Reserve to intervene by temporarily producing those dollars for the banks enabling them to fulfill the withdrawal demands. It is crucial to acknowledge that the funds mentioned were already accounted for. The money was already present in people's bank accounts, ready to be spent whenever they choose. The inflows and outflows balance each other out, resulting in a money being spent. My point is that without the bailout, the money supply contracts significantly leading to severe deflation. The money simply vanishes. And we make it disappear. Now with the bailout, the money stays the same. The Federal Reserve aren't adding additional funds into people's bank accounts. They simply retain the money previously present. At the moment, bank bailouts do not cause inflation in absolute terms. They just lock in the existing inflation. I'm just here just making sure everything's secure. Furthermore, credit circumstances are becoming extremely stringent at the moment due to banks facing difficulties. They are not taking on additional risks or issuing new loans. Instead, they are getting ready for the potential scenario where the money may be leaving their premises. If everyone withdraws their money at the same time, the banks will collapse. When financial circumstances become more stringent, it results in a decrease in available funds in people's bank accounts rather than an increase. Banking institutions are providing fewer loans and as is customary, some of these loans are being reimbursed. The overall quantity of money in circulation, such as individuals checking and savings account, is experiencing a net decline. This provides us with an understanding of the indicator that will signal the transition from deflation to inflation as the driving force won't be contributed to bank collapses, bank rescues or the nationalization and heightened oversight of financial institutions. The driving force will indeed be the monetization of US debt and an expansion of the money supply. The Federal Reserve's balance sheet is in focus and it begins to rise, not due to rescuing banks, but as a result of purchasing debt once more to finance government expenditures. This graph illustrates the expansion of the money supply. Until the money supply's growth remains in a negative zone, there is no potential for transitioning into hyperinflation. If the graph's appearance resembles its 2020 state, or possibly more severe, that's when concerns about hyperinflation should arise. Thus, it's highly unlikely that the US dollar will experience a rapid and extreme inflationary downfall anytime soon, certainly not within the approaching 90 days. 
but I could be wrong. How could it be wrong? In my view, the indicators don't suggest such an outcome. This is actually a good thing as it provides us with the opportunity to get ready. We're aware of the inevitable fate of all fiat currencies vanishing due to extreme inflation. So far, no currency has met its end through deflation. When you're aware of the final outcome and understanding that we haven't reached it, you have the opportunity to get ready, take action by investing in gold, silver, Bitcoin and other assets that will outlast failing currencies, stock up on food, secure access to or ownership of food and water production and invest in essential real estate assets that will remain in demand regardless of currency fluctuations. We know the conclusion of the book, we just don't know the remaining number of pages in the book. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.